Hi everyone, I hope you're good guy and welcome to a new video. So today we're going to talk about the Feather Flanger, the updated device from Ableton Live. Basically, they took the old Feather and old Flanger, they put it together and they create a new device. They also add a doubler effect that we're going to talk about it later. So Feather Flanger is often overlooked and it's kind of considered a little bit like a old effect, but it's really nice to add character to your sound and it's a great way as well to add modulation to a sound without changing too much its character. So it can be great, especially if you have a repetitive sound that you found a little bit too steady and you want to add movement without changing too much its tone. It's a great way as well to do that. So today I'm going to explain you a little bit each feature what it does. I will give you some tips as well, especially for techno how to set things. And yeah, let's get started. You can see here you have this black screen where you can select between the three of the different modes. You can go with the phaser. But key fader flanger, the concept behind is to kind of having a comb filter which is modulated. So comb filter, if you don't know what it is, it's kind of a, a cue which is looking like this and this can consider as notch. So it's basically like kind of a, a cue which is go down to the infinite and having a combination of that is co what is called a comb filter. And basically you're gonna, with the feather and the flanger, you're gonna take your original signal, you're gonna make a copy and this copy is gonna, the phase gonna be changed and you're gonna have this comb filter as well. And I've made this EQ because it's gonna help you actually understand how the plugin works. So basically notch is the amount of of this EQ you want. So for example, if I pick up three, it will correspond here to have only three EQ here. And let me go back to five. And basically center, what's gonna do is gonna actually change the position of all of these notch EQ. So if you check here, you have your five and you can see that it's gonna move and it does exactly the same down here. And spread basically what it is, is the distance between this uh, notch EQ. So for example, if you pick up just one and for example, you want them closer, let's say, all to each other. That's what spread is gonna do for example, if I go like this, you can see if I go close to 0%, they are very close one to each other. And then you can still have to change them with the center. So when you got that, if you listen to it, just here doesn't really hear nothing, but for example, if I start to modulate all of this filter together, can already start to hear this kind of weird effect and that's exactly what you're gonna do here. You can see right under you have here a LFO section where you can control the amount of LFO and the rate. So if I press, you can see it's moving. And basically this LFO is controlling the center and the spread. So you can control them independently or together. Basically you control this with the blend button at zero. It will only, only modulate the center. So all together they are moving to the left and right. But if I go to one, it will only change the spread position. So the distance between them will become shorter and longer and you will modulate this. So you can see. You can see if I go, if I pr go, let's say around here, you will see. The one in the middle doesn't change and it's on, only the other one who kind of modulate. So because it's just the spread basically, which is modulated rather than if I go to zero, you can see how they all move together. And if you go a little bit in between, it's obviously a mix of both. So let's say 30% of in the middle. So that they move all, they move both all left and right and the distance in the center as well it's modulated. So one thing you cannot modulate with is the notch but with the LFO but you can still use the external LFO and modulate that because especially with some kind of random you can have kind of nice Can be interesting to play with that as well. And then you have feedback which basically is gonna kind of create a little you see between this notch it's gonna kind of create a resonance a little bump here between them and it's gonna obviously accentuate the effect right, let me act. you can hear behind the the, the frequency eq on on the signal that how it's affecting let me act. actually remove that you can see this computer was saying and how it's modulating your sound and feedback gonna accentuate that you can see how it gets higher and more resonant you can invert the phase to get kind of more a hollow sound and actually if you play with this feedback but you 
You hear it start to have a kind of a resonator kind of effect, so that can be something really nice to get with tone and with texture as well. It's a way to use it differently a little bit than the classic way. All right, let me bring back everything. All right, and now the cool thing is basically the LFO, you have more control over it and you can just click on the arrow here and you have here the section where you can choose between 10 different waveform. So you got plenty of choice and there is over more control as well. You can control the duty cycle, which is kind of, let's say wave folding, wave shaping. So that can be very interesting. If you take the saw, you see you can get off. You can go negatively as well. And it's kind of create new. Let me go faster a little bit. That's really nice. You can here play with these two parameters, which are the phase and the spin, which is gonna basically add some uh, stereo, basically phase is shifting the phase to get the stereo effect. So actually, let me go back to the time. And spin it will create a stereo effect as well, but it's by detuning the LFO and we basically the shift will be kind of always evolving rather than on the phase. It's more kind of a, a cycling modulation, which is always constant and the same rather than with spin, it will kind of always involve. And if you check here, okay, you see they all move together. Now, if I start to bring a little bit of spin, okay, it starts to shift. But it's gonna shift more and more. You can see how it's shifting more and more and more. You see, like the shifting between the two is getting more important and more important after time. Rather than in the phase, it will always stay the same, the fixed one, and you can control this. So again, you can, for example, modulate the phase with the LFO and kind of get more creative. But another cool thing you can do, they add a second LFO, which is basically a triangle waveform which is gonna modulate the first LFO. So for example, one thing can work is to bring you LFO at, let's say 50%. And you can see you get this new complex uh, LFO wave, which is kind of mod modulated your phaser in very interesting way. Now, before to move into the flanger and the doubler, let me talk quickly about this. You have an envelope follower, which is basically you can add an envelope to kind of shape your modulation. So if you want, for example, a longer attack before your effect starts and you can play as well with the release. I usually personally don't use this that much, but that's something you can do. Safe based kind of self explanatory. It's kind of uh, everything under this cutoff frequency here. So everything under 200 Hertz will not be affected by the effect. So that can be nice if you don't want to mess up with the phase of your low end, for example. Then you have output to control the output gain. You have warmth, which is gonna add some distortion and gonna make it a little bit kind of a, a bit darker. And you draw classic dry weight amount. So things I haven't mentioned, obviously the LFO as usual, you can have it in rate, which is like unsync in free mode, or you can basically sync it to the BPM. And yeah, let's, go into the flanger. Basically flanger is kind of similar to phaser, but I would say like the it's a little bit stronger, the effect you can, for example, hear it a little bit more and time kind of control that. If you have a small time value, it will be more like subtle and the more you go up, the more you will have like a rich and sick signal uh, modified. So you can hear if I play in the low frequency. So this is something I really like, especially with a short time, because you kind of get a kind of weird filter effect, which is adding a nice character and a nice vibe. And then if you add some delay and nice reverb, you can really create some nice color out of this. And obviously, if you want to use the flanger in a more classic way, you crank up a little bit the feedback and... Add a bit of time and you can... 
slow down. And you have a more class kind of classic flanger effect. And then finally we have a doubler, which is kind of a, a chorus, I would say. And the interesting things here, it's kind of to play with the phase. And you can see you start to have Nice, interesting effect. Obviously, you can be, go a little bit more gentle. Obviously, I always do it with dry wet 100%. So, like this way, you can see how really it affects the sound. But you can obviously go a little bit more gentle with just add a more subtle variation. One thing I like to do as well with the doubler, if I bring back the phase to zero, and you can basically use it as a delay if you go at and bring up the feedback. And if you add a bit of LFO, it will kind of pitch it. So if you put, for example, the saw up, and if you put the saw down, it will basically like kind of delay and pitch up uh, as well in the same time. So you can. So then after you can kind of kind of mess up with you can can really get creative and get some very weird stuff out of it. Yeah, speaking of weird stuff, I made some couple of presets here. I'm just gonna, for example, to take like the, the device out of its context and not being any more a phaser, but more like a resonator. So I've shown you like basically with using the feedback. That was the original pair loop. But if you change the notch, you can change how it modulated. You can use it as a metalizer as well by having a very strong LFO speed. Again, play with the feedback and the notch to get very weird result. Then you can use it more in the classic way. Let's say, let's say here you see with you see what I was saying with the flangers, kind of giving this weird filter effect, which add a bit of character. And basically with the LFO as well, you make it move a little bit more and keep it more interesting along the track. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to grab the preset. Don't forget to like and subscribe before to grab them. And see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.